Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. And I've brought Stacy in to help demonstrate how our celestial clock works. Okay. Now we're looking over here at a diagram that I drew up back in about 2021, and we'll be referring back to it. It's kind of a paper representation of how the celestial clock works. But for today's class, we're actually going to use an interactive clock that I found over on the Internet. OK. The unique thing about this particular clock is we can move the hands independently mm, Okay. by hitting this unlock button. I can move the minute hand without moving the hour hand. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually important to the celestial clock because of the four additional days that's on the celestial calendar. Okay. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's get into how this all works. Now, I don't want to insult your intelligence, but since we're using a clock, I do want to refresh you on how the regular old clock works. The clock that we're used to. Mm -hmm. You have the second hand on the clock. And as you know, once it transverses or makes one complete revolution, it equals one minute. Right. So each one of these tick marks is what? seconds one second and then when it comes to the minute hand every time the minute hand moves all the way around the clock it represents an hour right so each one of these dots represents what a minute a minute and then when it comes to the hour hand each one of these revolutions represents a half a day as you know or 12 hours so each one of these tick marks represents what an hour Is that correct? No, actually, the line here represents the hour. See, it's in right, right, right. Twelve divisions. Yes. So each one of these tick marks was represents one fifth of an hour. Okay, so yeah, you definitely lost me. Okay. So <laughs> well, I'm okay. Yeah, it's okay. This, you used today. Each one of these represents twelve minutes. Okay. You have twelve, twenty-four, thirty-six, forty-eight, and then sixty minutes. Right. But what's not on the clock, what we're not used to, is the moon hand or mm -hmm. the lunar hand. It works just like the other hands. We'll use this hand right here to represent the lunation. This blue one will be the lunar hand. Which means that every time it makes a complete revolution all the way around the clock, that's actually one month or okay. one month, as we like to call it, mm -hmm. to make the distinction between the Gregorian month and the sacred month. What it's actually measuring is the degrees that the moon travels from one day to the next. It says all that on that little bitty clock. It says all this on this clock. So each one of these tick marks now, as far as the lunar hand is concerned, represents a half a day or 12 hours. So the lunation hand will move from here to here in 12 hours and then here to here, making a whole day. OK. Now I'll say that again. When it comes to the moon hand, each one of these tick marks represents a half a day. But when it comes to the star hand on the clock, each one of these tick marks represents six days. OK. So there are 60 tick marks, 60 tick marks, which equal 360 days. But if you know anything about how the celestials work, you know that there's actually four additional days that have to be added. Right. And we're going to show how that all works in this video. OK. Just to reiterate this, because it is really important. I created this table over here showing how we're calculating lengthened time by multiplying clock movements together. All right, now here is your normal clock. You have a second hand, a minute hand, and an hour hand. Mm -hmm. On the clock face, you have the numbers and you have the little tick marks between the numbers. Right. So this is actually what we're used to. The hour hand measures hours. When we're looking at the numbers on the clock, the hour hand is telling us the hours, but every number is telling us five minutes when it comes to the minute hand and the second hand, when it goes from one number to the next is actually five seconds. Okay. 
on it makes one revolution you will get 60 seconds or one minute the minute hand will give you 60 minutes or one hour at one revolution and the hour hand will give you 12 hours or half a day right now when you start adding movements when you double up the movements you can start to see days and months mm -hmm. being calculated you can imagine a clock with five hands on it where you would have a second hand a minute hand an hour hand with the addition of a day hand and a month hand okay now the hour hand is what's actually tracking the sun that's where we get these half a days from mm -hmm. from 6 to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. that's actually tracking the sun across the sky right now the additional hand that we're talking about would be a day hand that will measure days one revolution would measure 30 days does that make sense mm -hmm. you sure it does if it's the day hand one revolution one time around it would measure 30 days just like one revolution of the hour hand measures 12 days. So it's counting hours. Mm -hmm. The day hand is counting days and one revolution around would give you 30 days. Mm -hmm. That's actually 60 hours. Mm -hmm. 60 hours is equal to 30 days. Okay. That hand is actually tracking the moon and its progression over a month or what we call a lunation. So this is if there were two extra hands on the clock. If right? there was two extra hands on a normal clock, you would have a day hand. And then you would also have a month hand that counts the months. And one revolution of it will equal 360 days or 12 months. Okay. And each one of those little tick marks over there would represent six days. Okay, well, when you first said it, I was like, well, that would be amazing, but uh, I'm starting to be thankful that we only have three hands. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get into some additional <laughs> ones, but you're right. When we start to put the clocks together and make a double movement clock, what we call the celestial clock calendar, it only has three hands on it, but those hands are now the hour hand, the day hand, and the month hand. Right. The minute hand and the second hand are gone away, mm -hmm. leaving us only with three. So this is important to understand because this is how our clock works. It's like our clock is really just missing these additional hands which we would use to turn it into a calendar. Once right. we had these hands on it, it would be more like a yearly calendar, tracking the months as well as the days, like it does hours. Right. But you can actually triple it if you wanted to. You can triple the movements, put three of them together, mm -hmm. and it would start off, the slowest time on there would be the month hand, which would take a whole year to go around. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that would be what would you would know as your second hand or the fastest moving hand on the clock. Mm -hmm. The minute hand would be a year hand and it would actually take five years to go around. Okay. And the hour hand, I couldn't come up with a better name f than quintuple hand because it's actually measuring five year spans and it will take 300 years for it to go completely around the clock. Hmm. We could build that just as simply as putting three of them together like we have two together now to make the celestial clock calendar. Mm -hmm. But this continues to work. You can double them up as much as you want, even putting four of them together and you can get 18,000 years. It would take that particular hand 18,000 years to make one revolution. Okay. This is really interesting because what it's measuring is three 6,000 years year periods okay you know about the six thousand years of human history yeah and we learned that that's a day of human history mm -hmm. well it's really interesting that this clock when you keep adding these movements together would actually give you three days as if there's something to do with the three days or three six thousand year periods mm -hmm. i don't know that we understand that part yet but we can understand this quintuple hand because that's where we get our jubilees at. Right. One revolution of the quintuple hand will give us six jubilees over the course of 300 years. And another thing that's interesting is this year hand, which 
corresponds to what we learn in Enoch that over the course of five years, you would get 1,820 days. Okay. But you notice these asterisks here, which mm -hmm. means that you have to include the four additional days. You have to add those four additional days for this to work out. And I believe that's why man hasn't come up with this idea yet, realizing that our clocks work this way is because he's forgotten these four additional days. And those four additional days, if I'm not mistaken, is that the days of remembrance? Those are the seasonal days. Right. So let's go in and let's show you how that works just using the regular clock face. Okay, so we're gonna come back over here to our virtual clock. Now to calibrate it, understanding that the three hands on this clock represent the sun, the moon, and the stars. Mm -hmm. The second hand is gonna be our sun hand. As it's going around the clock, one revolution every 12 hours. The minute hand is gonna represent the moon as it's making one revolution every 30 days. And the hour hand is gonna represent the stars as it's gonna take an entire year to go all the way around the clock. Okay. So, to calibrate the clock to the celestials, we line everything up to the first day of the year. Now, in the year 2022, because the new moon was sighted on April the 1st, the clock would look like this. But for the sake of demonstration, we're going to align everything to zero. So all of our hands will point to the 12 in the year 2026. Because according to our Metonic cycle, understanding that there will be a 0% moon that would occur after 8 o'clock p.m. on March the 18th, it's more than likely that the new moon will be sighted at sunset on March the 20th. And since the current face of the clock has March the 20th in the 12 o'clock position, all hands will point to March the 20th being the first new moon after the spring equinox in the year 2026. But anyway, we'll come back to that. Now let's just concentrate on the movement of the clock and we'll show you how it aligns with the Gregorian days a little later in the video. What this clock represents on the celestial clock or what this celestial clock represents is sundown on the new moon after the spring equinox. Mm, okay. And that's very important because that's when the year starts. So I'll say it again. The first new moon after the spring equinox. And that's when we align all of the hands on the clock to zero. Right. So you have the second hand that's aligned to zero. And each one of these numbers here will represent an hour. And that should make sense when you're thinking biblically because this would be the third hour. Because when it's set like this, ignoring daylight savings time, this 0% will not only represent sunset, but will also represent sunrise. So this would actually be the start of the first hour. And then over here would be the start of the third hour. Right. And that's how biblical time works. Where down here would be the sixth hour. And then over here would be the ninth hour, which was the time when the Messiah made his transition into the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. They say it was about the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. That would have been about 3 p.m. Okay. But anyway, if you ever get a clock that does this, you can set it any way that makes sense to you. So you don't, you're not really locked in until you understand how that all works. Right. You, can, you can set it the way you understand it. Mm -hmm. Same as the moon hand here, which is representing the first day or the time in which the month is reset and the hour hand, which is our star hand now, is set to when the year is reset. Mm. So everything is lined up at, at zero. Okay. So the way the celestial clock works then, once you put the battery in and everything is lined up, the clock will start ticking as normal, just at a much slower rate. Mm -hmm. So let's just see how this works. So we're here on what would be in the year 2022, this would represent sunset on April the 1st. Okay, right after spring equinox. The, that was the first new moon after the spring equinox, correct. 
So the moon hand starts ticking around. Like we said, each one of these tick marks represents a half a day. So it'll take it 30 days to make it all the way around the clock. Right. But because each lunation only has 29.54 days in it, there will be another new moon sighting before the 30 days are up. Right. So whereas our hour hand is telling us that we're about to start the second month, we've completed one month and we're about to start the second month. Our moon is actually a little bit ahead of the clock. Right. And as it travels around, it does it again the same way the next month. Except now, instead of being a half a day behind, our clock appears to be a whole day behind mm -hmm. because of the 29.5 days. Right. So we continue another month and our clock appears to be behind yet again. A day and a half. It's a day and a half behind now but the way the sacred calendar works is we have to add a day to the calendar and so each quarter every three months the clock has to be calibrated and that's where our special clock here comes into play because we can unlock the hands that will be equivalent to holding down the hour hand and then moving the minute hand as we align the clock back to the new moon right so on the new moon on the third month we have to recalibrate our clock to the new moon when the new moon is sighted that's the day of remembrance that's mm -hmm. why that day is so Im important on that day of remembrance the clock is recalibrated so that the moon hand lines up with the zero position indicating that a new month is about to start and now it does the same thing all over again that's right. Every three months it does it. So if we were to push this clock ahead for three months, when we're coming around to the end of the sixth sacred month, the clock will once again be a day and a half behind. And we have to calibrate it again right. on the day of remembrance by aligning the moon hand to the sighting of the sliver mm -hmm. of the moon. Right. So on the day of remembrance, when we see the sighting of the sliver of the moon, the first thing we do is go and reset our clock mm -hmm. or calibrate the moon hand back to the beginning of the month. But notice how our star hand is not quite pointing towards the six. Right. I see that. That's because of that day and a half of remembrance. And that's how this clock is going to end up counting 365 and a quarter days as far as the sun hand is concerned mm -hmm. and when you take into account all three it's going to end up being 364 days and i know that's a little bit confusing mm -hmm. but what you have to understand is we're looking at two different methods of time here you have the sun which is 364 and a quarter days that's the sun's year and then the moon's year is 354 days but then when you take into account the sun, the moon, and the stars, you end up with a 364-day year. Okay. But anyway, as you transfer around and go another three months, and you're coming around to the ninth sacred month, mm -hmm. or you're ending the ninth sacred month, and I know that's a little bit confusing. While you're in here, you're actually already in the ninth month. Okay. Just like you was up here, right. you started off, right at the 12 but you was already in the first, first month, month. Yeah. but here you're in the ninth month but as you get ready to start the 10th month your clock is going to have to be recalibrated again on the day of remembrance and that's when you'll come and you'll push it ahead again so anybody who has one of these clocks because we've been putting them together and selling them through our website for a while now Anybody who has one of these clocks and is not calibrated in every three months, they'll notice that their clock is actually falling behind mm -hmm. and is not keeping time correctly. It has to be calibrated every three months, the, every time a new moon is sighted. The day of remembrance is of the utmost importance. And, you know, that's really special how our father set it up like that. It's as if he knew that one day we would have a clock 
that would be keeping time like this. Well, he probably did know. Well, he absolutely did know. <laughs> you remember in our first video when he showed us how to do this, that it was revealed to us that Abraham was the one who came up with the sexadecimal system, mm -hmm. which is how our clock is based on this this uh, 60 uh, day count, the 60 system. That's the sexadecimal system. The only thing about it is we we have to push it ahead. Mm hmm. We're so used to the clock doing all of the work for us, and sometimes we forget. But with this clock, we're definitely going to have to be part of the uh, making it correct. You have to keep it updated according to the days of remembrance. And again, if you come when we come around to the end of the year, our clock is once again going to fall behind by a day and a half. And this lines up with what we read over in the book of Enoch. That tells us that there are six days on to the sun or six days on to the moon or something like that. Well, like we said, each one of these tick marks represents a half a day. So if you don't calibrate your clock for the whole year, your clock will be that far behind. Mm. As you're getting ready to start the new year, your clock will be six days behind. Right. And one of the reasons that this is so important is because um, there might, well, there's probably going to come a time where um, they're going to have to do it by themselves. You know, you're not going to be here to give them the reminder that it's time to recalibrate your clock. And in order for them to keep up with the sacred days and times, they're going to have to know how to do this. And that is an added benefit to the clocks that you can get from our channel like we said we tell you guys how to make it in the videos is just putting two clocks together two clock movements together but whether you build it yourself or whether you have us to build one for you it's going to make you mind the days of remembrance or your clock will get out of whack you'll right. be you it'll, it'll it won't line up correctly the, normally the hands will indicate the new moon and tell you when the sabbath days are but as soon as you find that they're disjointed and it's not indicating the correct sabbath day then somebody will point out and say hey well did you update it during the days of remembrance and they said no well, i didn't update it so well your clock is behind it's it's falling behind a day and a half every three months right one of the things that we probably could look into doing and i don't know if you do this already is on the days of remembrance when we go to see the sighting of the new moon we probably could remind um everyone who has one of the celestial clocks to um time to update your clock yeah that, that would be something that we probably could do more often yeah you, you're right we haven't been consistent with um reminding people to update their clocks we tell them about the day of remembrance right but you know we, we haven't been trying to push this clock on people you know that that ain't been one of our missions is to sell the clock right you know? but you know it is more the more i do classes on these clocks the more i'm seeing how important they are you know when you first start putting them out i sort of really didn't understand it because i'm not a math person or a time person but you know, is it's just so important, especially, like I said, if you don't have or there comes a time when you don't have someone to remind you of that. Yeah, we definitely whether you have a clock or not, we definitely want to keep up with that day of remembrance. It's, it's um, that's how the celestial calendar works. The, the days of remembrance is the linchpin for the calendar, just like it says over in the book of Jubilees. Once you forget about the days of remembrance, all of your timekeeping is going to fall apart you're going to lose track of the days you're going to lose track of the, the months you're going to lose track of the years um you're going to be complete you're going to lose track of the feast days the sabbath days everything is going to be off if you don't remember the days of remembrance mm -hmm. so maybe we ought to call it a day of remembrance clock because you know it's really centered around that time where we update the clock mm -hmm. every three months right but if you guys got any questions or anything i, I can tell already we're going to have to redo this video um we've actually learned a lot in making this video you can probably tell um there's some time passed from when we started making this video to now it's because actually pushing these hands around the clock actually taught taught us something mm -hmm. right 
All right, guys, if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. And please make sure you leave any questions down in the comment section because like we said, we'll be doing this video again as we try to polish it up a little bit. So we'll take your questions into consideration. And if you guys would like to purchase one of the clocks, there's a link in the description below as well as if you would like to make your own clock, Coach has done a video for well, it. Yeah, the link is to that is down below too. Um, in the first video that we made, we um, where we documented this because you know we still have the option to get a patent on it. I don't I don't know that we will, but we have two years from the day we created that video um, to get a patent. If anybody wanted to, you know, help with that, you know, hint hint hint, mm -hmm. uh, or because you know our main mission over here is not making money or making clocks or anything. Our main mission over here is building the kingdom of heaven. Right. So if anybody wanted to help us out with these clocks, um, we we'll welcome you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like Stacy said, if you want to purchase one or if you want to make your own, just we are here to assist you any way we can. Right. And Shalawama. Shalawama.